This one won't need much explanation because it's chess. This happens to be a set I got in, I think, Krakow. And uh, I'm just going to take all these out and show you what the game's all about. I think I've got the most logged plays on this than any other game. Downside to chess is there's usually one better player. So um, based on how there's even rankings and stuff, um, yeah, you're always going to have someone who's better, which means it's there's no element of chance really. It's unless it's a bad move. The alternative is the complete opposite of chess, which is snakes and ladders, or what Americans call shoots and ladders. So you lay out the board. It's going to look like this. You have the light team, you have the dark team, and you put uh, the various pieces out in the following manner. If they're small, they're called pawns, and they go in the second row or the seventh row if it's the dark color. So on your turn, you can move them forward one space, or if they're in this initial row they start off in, they can move two spaces. You put the king, as that's the piece you're trying to get captured, on the fifth square from the left-hand side. You put the queen on the fourth square from the left-hand side. The queen always goes on its color, and it's always opposite. So you're going to find the alternative piece, such as their queen and their king, over here. How do they work? So you see now a pawn works. A king can move one space any direction. The queen is exactly the same, but it can go as far as it likes as well. You then move on to the next piece along. The rook, which is, I think, from the Arabic for castle or something, can move up and down as far as it can if it wishes to, or just, you know, single space or two space if it wants, in a straight line. The bishop is next, so basically symmetry it dictates it moves like that. You then have the, the bishop uh, in a moment, but first we have the knight. The knight is also known as the horse, but often just called the knight. Knights ride along on horseback, and for some reason in this game, I guess because they're trying to flank them or something, they're going to move across two and over one. So they're always hidden and they move out as follows. They can go one, two, one, one, two, one. So I'm just laying, so it's at the board for the opponent. And um, what's something to bear in mind in this game is I'm just going to tell you some of the quick sort of opening moves because if you've played enough times, you'll see that actually it's not very preferable. So the next piece along is the bishop. The bishop is third from the left and right. And what the bishop does is it moves a bit like a rook, uh, but it moves diagonally. So if it starts on this color, it's gonna continue and never move off that color. So it's gonna move diagonal, again, as far as it can if it wishes to, but then it could get stol stolen. It gets taken and removed from the game if uh, a pawn can get it or other pieces can get it just because it can then interact with it. So if this was here, that can take it because that's how it works. So the aim is to try and protect pieces and see if it's better. Now, pawns, these small chaps, they take by going diagonally, they take one. So you want to build them up strength. So what you might want to do is lead like this because it gets out your bishop and it gets out your queen. Another approach you could do is bringing out your queen's pawn here or one place to protect that piece. Protecting the center is very important because uh, it basically means you're then having a branching network of how pe pieces can interact with each other. Now, the third best move for your first move would be to bring out this piece here. The reason that's good is if you happen to bring out your bishop, then you can start castling. So it's actually going to be, sorry, it'll be that one. And if you can then get this out, so maybe you'd want to move it on somewhere, you're able to somehow get this into play, then uh, what you can do is castle. This is when you move your king across two and your knight, uh, your rook across one. In this instance, it's gonna go all the way over to B and then that's gonna go next to it. They don't always have these numbering on them. But this one happens to have that. So as you start venturing out, you're trying to you know, keep an eye on this. Rooks, uh, sorry, knights are obviously very valuable, more into this or focusing on helping the center. Because if a piece is here, one, two, one is there, but one, two, one is off the board. It has no relevance. So you're able to keep it something like that. You're able to sort of focus in more around the edges. Uh, other things that you might want to bear in mind is there's en passant, which is if you happen to get your pieces quite far across, your pawns, then what can happen is this these row can just jump past you and take it. And basically it uh, translates as um, taking without moving. 
Now the advantage of trying to get your pawns to the other end is if you get it all the way to the end, you get a queen or another queen, or you can convert, say you've had a rook taken, into a queen. Now, the other thing with um, playing this game is bearing in mind the kind of the value. So the queen moves everywhere, so it's kind of worth the most. These are very powerful because uh, I guess um, they're quite robust in one direction. If you happen to get these aligned, that's extremely powerful as well. So these are kind of have a value of what's known as about five points in terms of calculating if it's worth stealing, whereas a bishop is worth three. But again, you can't back up your bishops because they're on opposing things, but you can work through them together. And a knight is approximately three as well. So it depends how you play with your pieces. As to um, other strategies to win, you obviously can try and close and keep pieces in. You could also do like a pinching movement, whereby, let's say, uh, doing that. So maybe I had this here and ooh, uh, that piece there and happened to go uh, here. Then both pieces are at risk. One piece is going to get lost. But the downside with um, uh, then, say, this happening is then this piece co covers this one. Suddenly it does have some protection, but this piece is blocked. So watch out for blocking. And um, something else you could do is say threatening. Uh, let's say there's a piece here. So if you had a queen here, ignoring the fact that you could just protect it, you're stopping this pawn from coming out because suddenly moving into check. So check is basically when your the opponent's queen, or sorry, king, or your king is threatened. And there's one of two options. We either got to, or three. Either take what's it's being threatened, what's threatening it, block it, or have to move the kings. So in this case, maybe it could have moved out. So something you can do is just keep checking them and benefit in that way. So that's some examples of um, chess, and it's not as long as most people make out. I know that you know. There are known examples of games taking five hours or five hours, 42, I think one of them I heard about. But for me, 20 minutes is usually how long a game of chess can last. And in terms of movement, well, firstly, if you happen to do the same movement more than once, that's fine. But what you can end up doing is if you do the same move three times in a row, it's a stalemate, which means it's a draw. If you can't actually end up taking someone's piece because you've run out of pieces that lead to a take because they end up having fewer pieces that can lead to a take without them being taken themselves, that's also a stalemate. Other things that you might end up um, discovering is what's called fool's mate, which is whereby you've basically been trapped by your own pieces to stop your king from escaping or being blocked. And again, that is uh, something to look out for. So in terms of our moves in a game, I tend to find um, 17 moves, you know, maybe 20. That is the amount of moves that you might well find in a game of chess before you know, there's a victor. But it is about looking ahead, seeing what future moves you think could be possible. Um, it is a game whereby playing it by yourself and playing opposing sides is really good to see how things balance and get affected. And I think you'll find that's a good way of you know, seeing if, uh, if it's a game for you, seeing how things vary as to whether it's a, an approach and um, a kind of way of playing um, that you enjoy. So just seeing where all these remaining pieces go. Again, having games which come in this kind of box, uh, I'm not sure whether it was made in Poland or whether it was purchased in Poland and whether this actually is the, the correct way of doing it. But uh, yeah, we have a good instance, I think, of how we're doing it. Let's tell you what, let's just leave it as it is. But there we go. So that is chess, very old game. But, you know, I think it's, it's immersive, it's interesting, and, you know, try not to overthink it, and I think you'll have good times, although I don't like the speed variant. So this is just um, one of ginormous amounts of variants out there, but this is one such production, and it's 422 grams. Thank you very much.